I am Natasha Hastings, <laughs> still hoarse from all the cheerings and things. This is my co-host, Corey Carter, and we're bringing the culture to track and field. Track girl summer, track girl summer. Oh, what I really hope is that at this point, people who are watching, who've been watching for days, do the clap with us. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that's what you guys are doing. Hopefully. Someone said, what a day, what a day. And what it is. a day. We going to get into it. Someone said they are doing it. Yes. <laughs> so follow me, Natasha Hastings, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all the things. Follow the Corey, Ma Corey Monster. <laughs> follow the Corey Monster. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all the things. Follow World's Greatest, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. And follow my dog, the Kobu Monster, on Instagram because he's the cutest and deserves he deserves to be a star. Since we're doing shout outs, today is my son's second birthday. So give my son a birthday shout out. We're going to go to the water park later on and have some fun. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. We have been streaming every day. Follow Track Girl Summer on all the things. And oh. Also, World's Greatest on all the things. Continue. <laughs> We've been coming to you every day. Today is day 11. We've got two more days tomorrow and Sunday. Hope you all have been having a great time with you, with us. We have been enjoying. We tied. <laughs> but when the camera goes on, we, we come to life. And we enjoy being here with you. But, you know, we bring we bring the shenanigans we bring awesome athletes somebody uh came in the comments and said how y'all have athletes every day look we the plug everyone, <laughs> everyone likes us everyone wants to get on track all summer no we actually just have we i feel like over the years we've been able to cultivate some really good friendships mm -hmm. and like shout out to all our friends who are willing to support us in this crazy endeavor yeah. of ours and come on and share I was telling, I was saying yesterday, like I feel like they share things that I've seen, I haven't seen in interviews before. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Exactly. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. We love you. Um, I, we can we can save it for the show, um, but we will be joined by some more guests today to talk about them, but also talk about the amazing things happening on the track. Of course, um, we, mommy Allison, mommy does it again <laughs> she does I'm it gonna, again i'm gonna save it because you already know <laughs> we're gonna go over i'm Al not gonna save it allison felix is the, allison michelle felix ferguson is the greatest track athlete of all time and if you have a problem with that statement come find me because oh okay i bet jackie would beg to differ jack jonah kirstie is also the greatest <laughs> athlete of all time y'all know i gotta stir the pot but anyway <laughs> We'll be going over our four by one uh, predictions and what actually happened on the track this morning. And then we will be also doing our four by four predictions in the Hustle Clean podium prediction segment of our show. So we will be joined by none other than more great friends of ours, Brittany Ashley and Eric Kennard. They're here to spill the tea, talk about them, tell us what, what they got going on, all the things. Last bit of housekeeping, you know, if we post a tweet on the screen and there is a play button, push that play button so that you can check it out. And without further ado. And most importantly, Cecilia is here and she is on the line. <laughs> Cecilia. Shout out to Cecilia. Um, but right now, let's let's get into the fit check. Today I was like, let's be classy. Like I'm gonna look like I made Natasha wear a dress with me because I never wear dresses, so yeah. I wasn't about to wear a dress by myself. But like she's looking like a lady is she one she's a beast like a she's, sexy lady thank you and then like yeah. just some something slight on the shoes you know i wasn't about to yesterday i tried on natasha's heels and that was a mistake <sighs> she tried on some red bottoms and i had to give her a class but it's aisha okay. said she almost forgot about the show how could you aisha how could you how could you i'm just a little baby doll dress you know cheetah print um mom shoes again <laughs> So yeah, and let's get it, Ollie Pop Pop Poppin. You have root beer today, but there was one. Um, I love root beer, so there was one orange squeeze left, and I just wanted to have something fruity to start off my day. So let's get it, Ollie Pop Pop Popping, and we can start. Shout out to everybody! I see y'all joining the chat. Thanks for coming in. 
I, I haven't said it in since we've been on this platform, but you know, share, bring some folks, bring come one, come all. You know, I was thinking for our Sunday show that that we we paid. Can I be honest? We thought tomorrow was the last day of our coverage, so we have a great finale planned, and then we realize we have another date. But I think we should do where we like let people come on. We have the capabilities. We should just let people come on and, and talk to us. That, like that might fun. that might be a dope Starting finale. Starting with Cecilia. Yeah. Um, um, and two more days of Olympic coverage. We're gonna be moving forward. We'll tell you guys about our plans after the Olympics. We so got we got some Olympians that we're gonna try to catch up with. Have them tell us their experiences in Tokyo, because um, we don't just have friends that aren't in Tokyo. We got friends that are there, but we wanted to let them do their thing. And now that the games are over, or when the games are over, they'll come and share their experiences. So. Don't worry, we're not leaving y'all. We're gonna take a little break, but we're not leaving y'all. <laughs> um, when are you gonna have parents down the show? My dad, 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 that would be cute, it would be cute, <laughs> but dad, that's not gonna show us up. We were, we were wrong, we were wrong about these four by one. Well, about, about the men's four by one. I started with the men's four by one, okay. Because Italy. Italy. It's so funny. I want to do this. Yeah. They were walking out on the track and I was like, Italy's been having a good Olympics. but In I the sprints. In the sprints. Yeah. And I was like, but I don't know. Do they have four legs to get on the podium? <laughs> well, they baby. Have, they have four legs to get the gold. On top of the podium. Okay. They walked down Nathaniel and who is not one to play with. No. But I got to be honest. In the prelims, Nathaniel did not look that great. So, and, and I mean, no, y'all know I'm not trying to sit on this couch and be disrespectful to anyone, but I, I was not impressed with uh, how Nathaniel looked. So I wasn't that shocked, but it was still a nail biter because it came down to the line. Mm -hmm. Great Britain or Italy, excuse me, won in 37.50, which is a new national record. And uh, Great Britain was in 37.51. It was, so it was, came down it was to a lean. dip. Who, who's been doing their bench presses, had a little bit more pecs <laughs> pop on out to get yeah. across the line first because, you know, it comes from the chest. Right. So. So shout out to Italy. They add yet another gold medal to their medal count. And Andre does it again. First of all, let me give respect to all four legs because Canada, they, they and ran. ran really well. Like the, the first, their first handoff was a little shaky. But Some, they, something happened to slow down their stick because they were out for a while and then. But DeGrasse <laughs> finds his way to the podium yet again. <laughs> so DeGrasse goes home with three medals. Canada takes home the bronze in 37.70. Um, and then China was fourth. Bianca's right. She was wrong. It was their time on the podium. But they ran a national record. So shout out to China. Like, because, you know, you want to know whose handoffs were efficient and perfect? China's. <laughs> okay. China. Um, so I'm gonna have some gelato today for Italy or for me. Well, you know, I got reason to celebrate. It's it's all about once once this camera goes off, it's Liam's day. So we're gonna have gelato, cake, all the things. But yeah, in Italy's name. <laughs> in celebration of Italy, sure. <laughs> oh, that event was we can't play that video. That's okay. Um, and then in the women's in the women's four by one, I'm gonna give it to you. You and Tyson are right. You and we Tyson. call that thing perfectly, perfectly. Although I, I wanted, I really want, I really, well, I didn't want it because I want the the world record to stay with yeah. the the U.S. But I wanted to witness a world, world record. record being broken. I just like, I like watching fast times. I'm I'm happy with the uh the the. It was, it was still a fast time. Yeah. But I just, I just thought with the legs that they had. But I'm also happy break. with the record staying with Team USA. I mean, yeah. you know, yesterday I was on here talking about give the rest of the world their their credit. We got to get out of this, like, you know, just because we don't win, we didn't do well. Um, but I'm still biased. Yeah. <laughs> and I still want us to win. And I still want us to keep that world record. So I'm grateful that the world record is still standing. But nonetheless, it was a, a national, And it was a race. national record for Jamaica. Mm -hmm. They went Brianna Williams to Lane Thompson to Shelly and Price. They put Shelly on that curve, on curve. to Sharika. And the United States came back with 
we were right about the personnel. They went JVN to Tiana to Jana Prendy to Gabrielle Thomas. We thought that maybe we should have moved some switched the uh, straightaways. But, but but what I realized when they were walking out, I was said JVN and Tiana are already ran those legs, and they were it made sense to keep the sticks consistency with the. Lack so you of only practice. had two different handoffs, not three new handoffs. Yeah. Um. So it made sense. Mm-hmm. I still it was put, safe. It was safe. it was safe. Um, but they got the job done. And yeah. that's, that's really what matters. Um, and happy to see them run a gutsy, strong, like you could tell the girls went out there. Can you talk about Gabby's finish? Because she was trying to walk down Sharika. Man, listen, I- Gabby got, get, their handoff slowed down a bit. It did look like Gabby had to slow down a little bit to make sure that she got the stick in. And that we, we kind of talked about that as well, that one of the pressures of the many pressures in running the relay, you're especially on that last leg, like, you're not only looking at your incoming runner, but you're also looking at the other team. And so you have to be patient to wait for that time for you to go, but you're also anxious about keeping that stick moving, <laughs> keeping that stick moving, and accelerating, not accelerating, not being too far behind. And I, I think Gabby just wanted to go for it. And so I think she might've taken out a little bit too early and had to slow down a bit, but nonetheless, we still get a silver medal. Um, and the ladies did a fantastic job bringing some more hardware home. Um, and I would just like to say, um, third place, Great Britain. Great Britain. They ran forty-one eight, and I just Dina Asher Smith, like she had to pull out of her individual races due to hamstring injuries, was able to get it together. And no, you have hamstring injuries, and they put you on the curve. She ran a hell of a third leg. She did, and she she put it. I feel like she was so unselfish and to say I'm going to take take some time off and not run the 200 for myself individually to give my girls a chance mm-hmm. and that is a true team player and when we talk about track is not a team sport and I feel like a lot of, of us track because we don't want to be on teams. I, I like if I lose I want to because I lost not because someone else and the relist is your one chance to really sacrifice for someone else and yeah amazing performance by Dina and amazing ponytail by Dina too that, that ponytail <laughs> You know, so forget about the ponytail. The ponytail looked good, Dina, <laughs> along with the cheese buns. Also, we were also right with the four by one. We were on on. We were on on the, on the we, women's four by yes, one. Yes, because we also said I said that Honorable I thought the Swiss was going to get Swiss. fourth, and the, the Swiss got fourth, and y'all said Germany was going to get fourth, and they got fifth. So we we kind of know something. A little something, something. Yeah, that was that was some great relay. It was exciting I, to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Women's 400. Let me just put my drink down. Women's 400. First of all, to get into this final, you had to run 49. 50 point did not make it into the final. So we knew that this final was going to be a hot one. Uh, Shawnee Miller-Rebo defended her uh, her championship. <laughs> and uh, She's the third athlete to ever do this. She's second the third woman. athlete to ever do this. Second woman to defend her, her title. Um, in Over 4836. Um, Mara Lady Paulino set a national record for the Dominican Republic in 4920. And then she's been having a great Olympic game. Yeah, she she's, set three uh, national records in this meet. In she's the keeping, games. keeping, mm-hmm. peaking at the right time. And then lastly, and then I, lastly, I this one is going to, and then lastly, Allison Michelle herself. Felix, like 49, 46. She ran a season bet. This is her 10th Olympic medal. She's the most decorated female track and field athlete of all time. The GOAT. Bah. Is that what GOAT say? Uh, okay. <laughs> all right. What was that? Uh, uh, the GOAT. Um, oh man, Allison I say this all, does it again. Allison, I think this is either her 19th leave. or 20th um, major championship medal. This is the thing about they say, don't meet your heroes because they'll let you down. Allison Felix has never let me down once. She's better than the hype. She's, she is an amazing mom. She's out here running for Cami. She raised me. She's the reason why I'm the athlete I am today because she really taught me how to be a professional mm-hmm. athlete. And to anyone who dad and 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 she out here running in her own shoes for her own company because she's a boss no other athlete can say that no you might have some custom spikes but do you have a custom company (laughs) um (laughs) not the baby goat sipping the big i'm about to ship alice with some hay so she can just eat is that what i want to see is it hay 
They actually go to anything they want. Just like she eats up this competition. She eats it up anyone she wants. They can eat everything. Um, Cecilia, great comment. That ends the, we know who the fourth leg on the floor is. Um, Alice, Alice period. Um, I also want to, to go back and um, give credit uh, where, you know, in the rounds it was talked about, um, Sorry. Bird just, <laughs> a bird just flew into my window. Because the bird um, wanted to get in on talking about Alice and Felix too. But on the in the rounds, apparently the commentators spent a little bit too much time talking about Miller Weibo's uh, 2016 um, performance. And I just want to give Miller Weibo her flowers because I feel like her uh, moment in 2016 was really taken from her. And I think now is the time that she really gets to say, not only did I do it once, I did it twice. I always tell the story. <laughs> Start off by saying, Merle Weibo was disqualified in 16. I get the bronze medal, so I have the most to gain out of her being disqualified. But I think she just ran the race of her life to come back five years later. 48-36, a new national record. In that pink hair. In that pink hair. She came out and Corey was like, oh, she means business. <laughs> she I, when I saw hair. the pink wig, I said, <laughs> y'all girls got some problems. And so I, I want to make sure that Miller Weibo gets her flowers. Congratulations. You are already a part of history, but solidifying your stamp in history, doing it against a tough field. I know going up against Alice and Felix had to be, and I'm going to be a little biased. I wonder what the race would have been like if Allison wasn't in nine or, you know, in, in one of those inside lanes. But, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> oh, and great point, Tamika. Bahamas yeah. takes home both the gold in the women's oh, yeah. and 400. We're, we're so focused on, we didn't even catch that. Yes. Um, so congratulations hey. to the Bahamas and congratulations to the Dominican Republic. Great show by Paulino, another young rising talent. I, don't, I believe she's only 19. She's pretty young. So she's got a, a, a good future ahead of her as well. Um, so just overall exciting. I know you're going to try to wrap me up on talking, but basically I, I might go live later today and we can just talk about how amazing Allison is because there, there's so much and we don't have time to, to cover it all. And for, for time's sake, I'm going to stop talking about Allison. Are you? No, but <laughs> I'm just very proud of my friend. She got the job I done. Should at, be. And she more than got for, the job done. For Cammy, Mommy Magic, and... But and, Without and, even getting into it, I don't know how many five-time Olympians you know. I 20 know. years she's been doing this thing, and 20 years without, she's been without on Without even getting into the medal count, five times. And every time she's gone, she comes home with hardware. And I said this earlier, it's something about her like neck decolletage area, her clavicle. It just looks so good with a medal. Like, Allison's neck structure is just like, mm. It's really accented by a medal. And speaking of mommy ma ma magic, I wanted to shout out Cornera Hayes. I think she she didn't oh, have yes. the best race, but I think it took She's so much to mommy. get into that final and like her journey from becoming a mother. And she's got an you know, incredible story did, as well. Did mm -hmm. you know she didn't see her baby for I want it? It was a while because for, her baby for was months. in the Bahamas. It was months weeks when or the months. pandemic started. It was months. It was months, and she could not see her child because her child went for um, a little trip to see her her family his grandparents yeah. um and she could and she, i was talking to her and she's like i'm trying to get on a boat i'm trying to get on a plane like she could not get son i would have been swimming across and, the ocean and you know when when your kid is at eight I, they're I say, impressionable yeah, they're only impressionable yeah. but there's so many milestones that they're hitting yeah. and that yeah. she's missing yeah so Quinera no, had a hell of a year i watched her um post about that on social media and i could not imagine i I'm a, the definition of a helicopter mom, and, and she's, I'm proud of it. So don't, you know, and, you know, but again, like, stuck to it, didn't miss a beat, although I'm sure she did, because none of us know any of their true stories behind closed doors. Everyone has their journey, and everyone has their things that they have to get through, but I cannot imagine um, keeping the fortitude and the focus without having your child without having your, it, and it, not knowing when you're going to see your child like there's a difference right. between like oh i'm not with my child but i'm going to see them in x many days and i can do a countdown it's like yeah. i don't know what i'm gonna have access to my kid and it's not oh he's a teenager he's 16 yeah. 
this, the, you know, you're learning your he's words. You're so saying, young. I mean, like Liam was with his dad for the month of June and I saw him for one the weekend before trials. And I literally was like, Liam turns two today. He's two today. But I, I literally was like, oh my God, is he going to remember me? Is he going to forget me? Yeah. Like the, the crazy things that as a mom you think, and he was even younger then, but Oh. Shout outs to the mommies holding it down. Quinera, Allison, I'm we're so, so proud of you all. So in awe. Um, go Team USA. Go bring home some more hardware in that uh, 4 by 4 Yes. Um, and Quinera, and Quinera's just like the sweetest, she is the kindest sweetest. soul. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about this woman 15. Man. Safan went for it. She did. She led from the Which start. Was- surprising because i'm used to seeing safan kind of sit back and then just take over at the end but she went for it and now in hindsight i i I mean i feel like she knew she had to because this this one wasn't going to be an easy one yes and we talk about i was we were were talking about how she had that amazing kick in the 5k but i'm like sprinting past 5k girls no shade five girls is is a different type of speed than kicking with 1500 girls and we saw that at the end Faith Kip Young from Kenya just was like, deuces. I'm out. I'm going to go get my gold. She ran 353.11. Um, and Muir, I told you she looked good. Mm-hmm. And Monica, when she ran that eight, she also had the foot speed at the end to um, oh, bring it out. Time. So Laura from Great Britain ran 354.50 to get silver. And Hassan still got him another medal. She has a chance to get another one. She's just been working she's this still whole. She's still doing a triple. She's working this I was asking Natasha, I want to add up how many laps she's done this this Olympics. Because um, the thing is, like... In this heat. In this heat and every event, like, the 15 had three rounds. Mm-hmm. The 5K and the 10K. The 5K has two, has two, two rounds. Two rounds. And the 10K, 10K is 10K a straight final? I'll have to double check. I feel like it's just a, I feel like it's just a straight final. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, like, 98% sure it's just a straight final. It's but. been a long week, y'all. <laughs> so... That was that was an exciting race, um, and we saw Corey McGee didn't do. I need to double check what uh, place she got, um, but Corey McGee was in the final. We talked about how she um, 10K is your final. Um, we talked about how she fell in the semi, so they put her in retroactively. Um, I'm trying to like where's the results? Here we go. I like didn't write that down. Yeah, Corey got 12th. Um, Eleanor got 10th. Um, but yeah, it was a great great final. Um, they went two hundred seven for the eight hundred. I can't run two hundred seven. I probably could run two hundred seven, but mm-hmm. it's that's still very fast to keep going. To keep going. Mm-hmm. Um, and the women javelin, Shi Ying Lu from China won with sixty six thirty four. I mean, she had it in the bag from her third floor, third, third, uh, third, third throw. It's okay. I, it was keep, a, it I keep was trying a, to say flow. It was a it was a tongue tie, tongue twister. She had it in the bag. Um, and we were talking about, you know, she was going for her sixth throw and like, she knows she's won. She was celebrating after the, like, think the last Final person throw, yeah, threw her. and we were trying to talk about like, would you try to go all out or would you just, Natasha's talking about some, I would just, you know, I'm done. Got my medal. <laughs> Unless you're going for her. Unless I was like, like Ryan Krauser, where it's like every throw is like farther and an Olympic record or a world record, like then, but like if, if. You know, I was just, I look cute, get my medal. <laughs> I think I would just be like, I don't have to, work. like, if I foul, I foul, I won. So I, yeah. I can really just, like, fall out and see yeah. what happens. Yeah. Um, Marie Andrzejczyk from Poland. You know, Poland in the throws have been killing this yeah. Olympics. 64, 61. Kelsey LaBarber from Australia. She got a season best of uh, 64, 56 in the javelin so great throwing all around from the ladies um let me just double check i gave you maggie malone from us got 10th um with 59.82 this 5k was really good as well Mm -hmm. um joshua chepti from uganda he won with a 12.58.15 um shout out to mo from canada bowerman bowerman track club he was six with a, with a lap to go, and he just went out. And we saw him fall short in the 5K. And t- today he was like, "I am getting a medal." So shout out to Mo. He trains with he trains in Oregon, um, and he ran a season best to get himself on the podium. And Paul Chalimo, oh, 
I love me some Paul Shoemaker. I love Paul too. Yes. Paul is a great guy. Um, he got he ran season best of 12, 59, 17 to get the bronze. Um, Fisher, he also won the 10K. He ended up ninth. Um, and William Kincaid Dude. got 11th um, <laughs> with a season best. So, um, good. I just, I, I You're just be moving fast. It's okay. I know. I know. <laughs> Sorry, friend. Um, yeah, shout out to Paul. Shout out to I feel like Grant's really gonna come like give him a few give him a few years. I feel he's going to be that dude when it comes to the long distance. Yeah. I really see that for him because he's he is a force to be reckoned with and he's still very young and you know, he's from Stanford, so special oh, place in my heart. It is. I must be getting some money, y'all. My hand is scratching me. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> Send a black woman's money. Maybe that's what maybe that's what it is. Um, My cash app is that what it is? Yeah. Um, and then in the men's fifty k race watch, fifty k race watch. Um, David Temeloa from Poland got first. Jonathan Hilbert from Germany got second, and Evan Dunphy from I like Dunphy. Um, <laughs> if you guys are office fan from Canada, got third. The U.S. actually didn't have, any, didn't competitors, have any competitors, but I so. just wanted to shout out John Nunn because John Nunn has been our race walker for Team USA for forever. And he, people don't know this. He, I don't know how he gets the ingredients in the, and finds an oven, but it doesn't matter where we are yeah. in the world. He <laughs> makes the best chocolate chip cookies for Team USA. Yeah. Um, so. I, and I, a shout out to um, dads. You know, we, we give moms all the love, but the cookie business, he actually started with his daughter. And they came up with the recipes together, and they the cookies were really good. They're wrong. Good, um, really good. Yeah, I had I always have to like wait for me for myself to be done with competitions. But then you you would go into the athletic training training room, and there would be like fresh hot cookies. Mm -hmm. So shout out to John Nunn. I feel like, like they they would have to be like, okay, y'all, make sure everybody gets some. Don't just take yeah. It it would be that bad. Like, so we love our race good. walkers. Um, they I feel like they don't get as much love as they should. Um, if you don't know about race walking, you, you always have to have a foot on the, on the ground, ground when you're walking. <laughs> I, um, had, I had some friends. I play, if y'all don't know, I play bingo every Friday. The Panini, uh, I'm in a virtual bingo group. And so they talk about the Olympics. And there were two things that came up. They were like, dressage. I hope I'm saying that right. The horses that, that mm -hmm. dance. <laughs> and then race walk. They were like, yo, I had no idea. Like you could walk that fast. I was like, it's not really walking. They're they're running. They're just, but yeah, it's like you're in contact with the ground at all times. You only get like one or two missteps. Before. Why is my dad here? Why is my dad here? I'm sorry. Continue. I just read a comment of his. Continue. <laughs> you only get one or two missteps out of the entire 20k or 50k, and you are disqualified. So it's about from keeping contact with the ground and also making sure that your heel and foot, it, it, it's truly it's an a lot, art. It's a lot of hips. It's a lot of hips. It's a lot of hips. It's an art. And on the women's side, the 20K race walk, um, Ant Antonella Paul, Paul, Paul Messiano from Italia. Shout out to Italy. Italy's um, having what, an, an got, amazing got Olympics. First. Sandra Arenas from Colombia got second and Hong Lu from China got third third and we did have we did have a woman race walker robin stevens um she got 33rd from the u.s so um you talk about the world the world has us on the race walk but i feel like they always have had us on the race walk uh, um <clears throat> shout out to them in these hot conditions like that was one of the things they kept talking um race walk, that like mm -hmm. these conditions are not favorable for these athletes but when you train for a moment for so long, nothing's going to stop you. So shout out to the athletes uh, holding it down. So that concludes what was on the track last night and this morning. Corey and I actually kind of got a break <laughs> a little bit last night where we just got to watch the race walk. And um, we went to, I went to bed. I went to bed early. Listen, listen. Is Whitney in the chat? Um, we're waiting on Whitney to come in. Um, okay. But so I have a question for, for you. Yeah, so we talk about, you know, Allison's out here and every other promotion is saying like, I'm out here running for Cami. I'm running for women. Like what, what is, I feel like a lot of athletes are like, this is my purpose on the track. Um, mm -hmm. What do you, what do you run for? I run for my baby. I mean, I just, what did you run for before than that? 
Well, I've always said that my why always changes. And that's, sure. that's one of the things that like year after year, you have to check in with what your why is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some years it was proving to myself that I could just do it. Going from not making the team in 2012 to turning around and, and becoming U.S. champ, like I had to prove to myself that like I deserve to be out here, mm -hmm. you know. Um, then it went to, you know, surpassing that and like trying to get on the podium individually. Um, mm -hmm. There was also a point in my career before 2012 where I only made the team as a relay member. So, you know, you, oh, oh, here she is. Hi, gorgeous. Hi. Good, hey, morning. Friend. Good morning. Good <laughs> morning. We'll get back. We'll, well, get, we'll get, it's not important. It's not, I mean, it is important. No. You, what Come you on. do is important. Mm -hmm. Why you run is important. Um, But Whitney is here. Um, Before we start talking to you, I just gotta tell people who you are. So Whitney is over. one of our best discus throwers in the U.S. Um, she's actually made four world teams. Like, she stays on a team. Um, she is from San Diego State. And actually, you are an NCAA champion, and you were, like, the first person in San Diego State to win in that event. And also, like, from, like, 19-something. Well, I, I had this down. Huh? 1984. First thing so okay, I, notes. I think Natasha did something. I didn't touch a thing. In She's a 2016 today. Olympian and a, an amazing thrower. She has the best, what, probably one of the best TikTok in track and field. Um, and welcome, Whitney. So Thanks gorgeous. For me. Thanks for being here. I feel like we we were talking on like we're, we were we've been a little sprint hurdles heavy when it comes to our guests. And I was like, we gotta have more throwers, more jumpers on. on. We gotta show everybody love. Cause we are track fans and I'm a big fan of you. Uh, how did you start throwing? It's I wanna, wanna, want to know first and foremost. And discus of all was my mom, I come from an athletic family. And so when we were coming up, my mom just kind of put us in as many sports as possible. She was a volleyball coach by the time I was born. And she used to take us on walks at night. She was a believer that she got to keep her kids moving. Um, I hate to use the word chunky, but she was one of those moms. Like, my kids will not be chunky. We did not eat dung food. So we would walk the track at night. And one night at our local uh, college, we actually saw a whole bunch of kids in, like, uniform lines, like, doing drills. And she was like, this is where I need my kids at. And lo and behold, it was a youth track team. Um, Corey may be familiar with Team World in Riverside. Yes, yes. Shout out to the IE. Yes. My and dad knows everyone's like in the areas. Like um, their whole family. Yes. So that's kind of how that happened. She put us all on the track team. My brother is one by one fell off, but I continued to enjoy it. I actually threw the <laughs> shot put. And so from that day forward, from 10 years old to San Diego State, I threw the shot put. Uh, that's kind of what paid for school and got me through life. Uh, aside from basketball, I could have been a dual athlete either way. So mm -hmm. pretty cool. Yeah. So when did you switch the the discus then? And I also have a question. Since you are a discus thrower, are do you do this when you were throwing the shot? Were you spinning or were you gliding? I assumed you I was a glider. That's a great question. Look at you. I was a glider. I was a glider as well. Shout out to glide team. I was Shout out good to glide. At <laughs> yes so, I was a glider I didn't learn the discus so I got to college well I, I need to know what the difference is because I've, I've heard the language so gliding you're going to step back here and then you're going to turn it's, you're going to turn move the hips it's in the and hips. then here everything's in the hips I had a coach my shot put coach was my hurdle coach everything was somehow related to hurdling and, he, and then spinning I don't know how to spin you can, but you spin, you um, turn it, twirl. You know, my bottoms are, um. <laughs> I'll show it again. They're, they're very like bunnish. Spin. We'll go with that. They're very bunnish at the bottom. So we're just going to roll Zoom. some videos yeah. later on. We can tap back into that. But, uh, yeah. I always think throwers are some of the most graceful human beings on the track because you guys have to be large to throw whatever you're throwing. But then you get in these tiny little rings and yes. have to throw it like a ballerina. And 
make sure you don't out of it so you don't get out, which I find amazing. So you started throwing discus in college. We got off track. Yes. Um, my first year learning the discus, I became an All-American. My second year, I won an NCAA title. Okay, excellent. <laughs> and I kind of okay. just stuck with it. I, that really, That's really how it happened. I thought I was going to go off and do public relations. That was my major in journalism. I uh, tried and fill for me just to get school paid for. I had no passion, didn't watch it. And um, that's really all she wrote. My college coach at the time told me, it's something you should pursue. He said, you have your whole life to work. Mm -hmm. He said, but you have a small window of opportunity to be an athlete. And I held on to that. And here we are eight years later, uh, four teams and, or excuse me, three world championships and an Olympic team just off talent really. And just listening to my coaches. That's amazing. Um, yeah. Also, you were kind of talking about yesterday, parents pushing their kids too early. And I think your story is a testament to me. Like she started this event in college and became an Olympian. Like, but you had the tools because you said you played basketball, you did shot put, like you had the tools, you're an athlete first. And yeah. then you specialized much later and you found you found what you were meant to do much later. And it worked out for you. Clearly. Well, also, and, I, I, I like to, because uh, I, I always put the charge on parents as well. And talking about your mom being a volleyball coach and, but also embracing the importance of our kids being active and healthy. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like she was like, I'm not going to push you to do what you don't want to do. I'm going to let you right. find or let the sport find you. And I think that mom, you know, cause I'm biased to moms, but <laughs> Shout out to mom for allowing you to, you know, have your own journey and, and let, let things find you. So, sorry. I, I won't downplay her. Once I got to high school, she actually went to conferences and read books and coached me all the way to college because I didn't have a coach. Wow. So my mom, my mom taught me how to throw the shot put. Yeah. Wow. For team world. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and I, I don't want you to get I'm on mom. all those. I don't you get on our show and lie um me because you said you said you have a passion you were and i understand before you probably didn't have a passion for the sport and you were watching but i read you watch three hours of slow motion videos a day to analyze your technique when i don't I, even like, I, when, I don't do that when i first learned to throw so i'm trying to find this quote every time i do an interview people ask me that because they're like there's no way my first two years of learning how to spin i became obsessed after I won NCAA title, I go, well, if I'm going to listen to my coach and he thinks that I'm, you know, I can do something with this, let me learn. Let me go look up. That's when I started to do my research. Who was great? Who does my body type kind of align with? Because I'm not a big girl and I'm not super tall. A lot of these discus women, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, you've seen these wingspans. I'm only 5'8". And I didn't start lifting heavy until I went professional, um, very weak. Just I just I was just quick and I had long levers. So... I, I would just sit and watch YouTube videos, not trying to copy, but just trying to learn how to move. I, I, I always, try, I just wanted to understand, but I stopped that literally, like after my first two years of being professional, I do not watch video anymore. So, I mean, not an updated, <laughs> not well, an updated you know, that's, that's a, if you're doing three hours a day, times 365 days, times two, like that's, still a lot. that's close to, you're getting close to this hours to becoming an expert you just crash coursed it um, I, I, I want to also backtrack to the five eight thing because we we've been talking that's my about dream that, height you the know. height thing but also i thought you were taller than that so every you know, time Cor Corey says that she didn't i'm five eight and three quarters and Corey's like i thought you were much taller than that. it's because we have a presence you definitely that do we just seem bigger than you know yeah, i me definitely too. thought you were taller than present <laughs> um we'll keep oh. According to Wikipedia, it says you're, you're taller. taller. So, <laughs> what do you say? I don't know. Well, uh, Aisha, sure. our fact checker will let us know. <laughs> how tall are you really? We'll tell you how tall you are. Five, five ten. I thought, I thought you People were five ten. Like, I'm eleven, five ten. Aisha says five ten, but I'm I'm only five eight. And when I take my shoes off, people go, "Oh, that's it." I'm like, "Oh, that's it. That's it." That's yeah. It. So, <laughs> but I also think that's a testament to like I always say, no one would have put me in the hurdles given my body type. Like, no one will probably put you in the discus game. But it's like, I really feel like it's the athlete 
not the body type that's going to determine whether or not you're successful. You work with what you've got mm -hmm. and you figure out how to like work with what you have to be on top. Yeah. Um, that up Cause we've definitely come a long way in terms of how we look now as discus throwers. Uh, back in the day, I'm going to say back in the day, these women were um, much larger in stature. A lot of times now we're built more like sprinters, very lean, um, yeah. very speed oriented. And it's, so it's beautiful to see how far this event has really come. And it's yeah. good for women also to see that like you can go either way and be successful. You don't have yeah. to be put in this box and, oh, I have to gain so much weight. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you need to do to be great, be great. But for some of us, we didn't, you know, the weight gain wasn't necessary. So yeah. Actually, Val, they have her up on the screen. Val slipped yes. down a lot this year. Like, she came yes, back she from summer training, and I saw her in the weight when I was like, Val, you were tiny. Um, but she's also, she's, she is tall, but I'm like, really she's strong. strong. She's taller than me. She's very strong, though, because I see her and Zion doing the weight room, and I'm just like, all right. She's like, she's like benching what my, what I squat. It's crazy. <laughs> um, I am not as strong as most people. Um, I talked about your TikTok, and one of the things I, her TikToks are very entertaining, but one of the things I really love about your TikTok is that you kind of spread this body positivity. You had one mm -hmm. where you, you, you have, you were kind of <laughs> showed how, how good you looked in a bikini, but you were saying, this is what, this is my squat max. This is my bench press max. Like I am strong and I am beautiful. And I love that. I think seeing all body type celebrate is is very important and can you just talk about being multi two girls and getting to love their body i the first thing i do when i speak to young women is to be honest that i went through that the whole reason i didn't lift in the beginning of my career is because i didn't want broad shoulders i didn't want a large back i didn't want to be a big girl um i was just very afraid to look muscular i all that stuff and then i grew out of that i go you know what can I, can I say curse words on here? Go ahead. Oh, no, but yes. I'm like, you want to keep getting your ass beat? Or, you know, do you want to, like, be competitive? And I go, push yourself a little bit. And you know what? Once my th my thighs starting to thicken out a little bit, I got a little something in the back. I said, you know, this is kind of nice. No, this is nice. <laughs> and I truly embraced my beauty and just being muscular and being strong. And I my confidence shot through the roof just as an individual, not even as an athlete, as an individual, I felt beautiful um, because I was so strong and there's so much life in that little girls go, Oh, and it's relative. I, I say buff or I say muscular, but I'm still relatively not really don't have a lot of definition until I tell people my numbers and they go, wait, what, how's that possible? You don't look like this. And I go, that's the beauty of it. You can, you know, lift all these heavy weights in the gym and your body is just gonna start doing its thing and you'd be surprised. So that's kind of how I approach when I talk to young women. Um, and I would say it's helped. It's inspired a lot of them to go, I tried this and I feel great. And it's, it's empowering. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> because I don't know if you know or not, that's actually a lot of the inspiration behind my nonprofit in that I I have had and sometimes to this day still have body image issues um and i think that it's your message is so important so i'll be calling you to come and talk to the girls now that i know that that's a passion of yours as well but you. like to know that like any size is beautiful first of all yeah. mm -hmm. um we're women of color taking up this space um but also like i i going through high school dealing with like you know, I didn't have the boobs and the hips that the rest of the girls were getting. I had this athletic body, right, all my life. But like, can you count how many places in the world you've been? The, Thirty-six uh, countries. Before the, the age, you know, the relationships yeah. that we've made, the things that we've accomplished, and on top of all of that, we are beautiful, powerful yeah. women. And it's like overall, that is the message that we need to be spreading. So. Kudos to you for being vulnerable and sharing that because it, it's not, not easy. an easy space yeah. to sit in and be honest because we always say that like athletes were these superheroes, but we're human too and we go through real things. Yeah. And, and, you know, to to have the bravery to share that. Um, thank you, sister. I'm going to ask you to be brave one more time um, okay. just because I think it's important. We Like Natasha 
is you know going to school what exactly are you going to school for <laughs> but you're going to school clinical mental health and we talk about mental health and the importance and i think being vulnerable and brave is something that i can attribute to you um because who i'm i don't know why it's i care so much she's been getting really i've been getting low. emotional it's like you guys keep making me not be a thug but you have talked about how the strength of ask for help when you're going through some of your lowest points and i think a lot of us struggle in silence and I really want to commend you for saying, Hey, like I went through some dark times and I had to like get therapy and get help um, because I wasn't where I needed to be mentally. And I just would love if to whatever you want to talk about on that, like what that journey looked like for you to like getting yourself into like a mentally okay place. I think we all can, all three of us can relate that the highs of track and field, there's nothing like it, but the lows, Mm. will take you places that you go, how do I get out of there? How did I get here? And what am I supposed to do while I'm here? Um, and I experienced that for the first time after that wave. So I made four consecutive teams in a row. I was fought, I was on fire 13 to 17. I, in my mind, I was like, I was never not going to make a team. And then I had to make a coaching change and everything shifted. I actually self-coached for a year before I moved to Kansas from California. And it's just been bumpy ever since. Nothing has ever really clicked. I've struggled. I, uh, Nike dropped me in 2017. So having to navigate this new space of like finding my own ways to fill my income gaps. And so that was new. Having to leave practice but go home and write letters and go talk to this person. It was a lot. It was a lot. And on top of that, I sucked. I was like, <laughs> okay. That's wrong oh yeah, I have to write these letters. And I'm like, I'm struggling. I don't have any current accolades. I'm writing off the pass. It was tough. And I think and, touch on ahead. something because I feel like as athletes, a lot of our self-esteem and self-worth is tied to, to our accomplishments. And, and, and the accomplishments right now I can say I did X, Y, and Z 20 years ago, but if I'm not competing well today, yeah. that, that changes my whole mood. And I think that's real that you said, on top of this, I sucked because that's how we feel. And it's like, you're an amazing athlete. You, you have accomplished so much, and yet there's still that, like, well, if I didn't do well today, like, who the heck am I? Yeah, we buy into that you're as good as your last throw or your last race, race or, and it's like, but I did it, though. Yeah. Who cares if it was, you know? So, yeah. I think that's so real, like, but continue. Sorry, I just had to highlight that. <laughs> no, I'm glad you stopped me um, right then and there, but that's kind of what I dealt with, and I mean, it's still an ongoing battle, just what do you do now? We bumped off the team for Tokyo. Um, I made that team, but we can move past that. But anyways, I made that team, got bumped off, and I go, I had to deal with that. And I go, man, we're looking at two teams in a row now. For some people, that's not a lot, but I go, for me, I go, you go from making every single one to being literally right there every time. You go, what am I doing wrong? I, I'm thinking I'm on the right path. <sighs> the whirlwind. I see it. Uh, 2019, I tried to commit suicide. And um, it was bigger than track. I just felt in life, I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know where I was going. I wasn't talking to anyone about this. This, So I was keeping all this to myself and going to practice with a smile. Uh, Whitney House today going, living the dream. And I was dead inside. And I just go, I'm tired of this. I'm out of here. Um, but luckily, <laughs> that wasn't successful. And I got help. I, I reached out to various individuals that I could trust with this secret at first. And um, just kind of where I was, I didn't want to be here. I had to be honest about that. Um, and so that led to counseling. I've been in counseling about a year and a half now. I didn't go right away. It was kind of like a family thing. And then I was just like, I want to talk to people who don't, someone who doesn't know me, essentially, to give me a different kind of perspective. And I, I love my family. It's, it's not a, a dig, but most people you confide in that are close to you kind of give you the, you'll be fine. This is just a bump in the road. They don't understand or they don't validate where you're at. And I feel like that's the biggest thing sometimes about reaching out to a counselor, the, the validation of your feelings first. Mm -hmm. And that what we're, feeling, what we're feeling is real and it's not to be brushed over. And I, our loved ones love us, so they're just very protective. So it's like, oh, don't think that, you're fine. And I go, I'm not okay right now. I'm not myself, you know? Um, so that was huge for me. And I told my therapist, I don't care how healed I become, he stuck with me for life, so. Yeah. I just, at this point, I just enjoy it. Um, I, I Therapy Thursdays, I'm down to once a week now from three days a week. It's more like a check-in. 
I have my weeks, you know, it's not always perfect, but I'm not where I was. I'm not yeah. where I was. Yeah. I love that. Cause I think, I mean, obviously I'm biased with what I'm studying. I want to go into counseling and I, especially, I, I wanted to move into the space because of the, the stigma and the taboo number one in our community as minorities, but then as athletes, right? The ability to ask for help, but then not only to ask for help to walk into the space and see someone that looks like us, you know, mm-hmm. because we talk about like that relatability and there is something about sitting in that room or now it's, I don't know if yours has changed because I'm in therapy every, every Tuesday at 3 p.m. It was so yeah. funny because <laughs> I've been low key living here to do the show, and Natasha goes, "Okay, I'm going to therapy," and and like I, she says, "I'm going to therapy," so I'm like thinking she's gonna get in the car and go, and so I'm in the room with her, and she's like, "So you're gonna be here with my session?" And I was like, "Oh, it's on, it's on Zoom, of course. Like, let me get out of here. Like, let me not be in your business." But I was just like, no, but oh. it's it's true. I get so excited. Oh, it on is- when Thursday morning comes, I'm like, "Yes, it's therapy Thursday. We are one or two o'clock p.m. That's usually my time slot." And I'm I'm there 20 minutes early sitting in his front room with my coffee ready to go. I, <laughs> I get so I like excited. That. You get to go there and like be truly vulnerable, have your yeah. feelings validated. Um, and as you said, there's still bumps in the road, right? But what yes. I appreciate most, I, I hear people say like, what is someone who doesn't know me going to tell me, right? How is mm-hmm. this person that doesn't know me going to tell me? And the biggest mm-hmm. thing that I've learned is not, it's not that we won't have bumps in the road. But now I have the tools to work through those bumps in the road. Yeah. Before yes. I didn't have the tools. It, it, oh, you're fine. It's okay. That doesn't help me. <laughs> right. How do I get through this moment if I just continue to? So I'd, I'd love to hear if if there's anything that you want to share. Because I'm also very passionate about that being a safe space. And you share what you want to share. Yeah. But I'd love to hear like if what what's the thing that like gets you so excited about going every week? I'm um, hoping to comp- compartmentalize uh, a lot of times everything kind of just got into like one big bowl. And I just was like, I didn't know what to take out of the bag at what time mm-hmm. that was very tough. So I've been able to, okay, I'm going to go here today. I'm going to do this today. Mentally just in a better space. The second thing, obviously the validation of where I'm at and I, I'm not crazy. A lot of times we go, Oh my God, I'm crazy. Or we're embarrassed. None mm-hmm. of that, all that. After like my second session, I was like, listen, I'm, I start the sessions now. So I go and I'll tell my therapist, like, okay, this is where I want to start today. And it's so empowering. And he loves it. He loves that about me. He goes, he just listens now. And the third thing I go, you don't go to therapy for someone to tell you. I actually got to hear myself for once. She, I always say that, like, oh. I goodness. cannot <laughs> describe You can't explain. A, that's a good therapist. I've heard crazy stories I go with. But if you can find the right fit. You get to hear yourself. And there's a lot of days I would go, oh, there it is. We'd have those aha moments. And they didn't say anything. I was talking for a half hour and I go, that was all me. And then from there, we, come, we compartmentalize. What does that mean? We dig into the things that are a little deeper. I want to talk to you about this today. He may even have me do an activity or breathe or meditate. Um, in that moment, so we can kind of figure some things out. And I go off and I usually get homework till the next time. And I go, oh my, it's amazing. It's amazing. If you can experience that, it's really hard to explain, Natasha, yeah. but yeah. it once no, you I, understand it, when you start going to therapy and to hear yourself, you go, oh, okay. There's yeah. a lot going on. Yeah. Yeah. It and truly I, is like not, like you said, like I, I have moments where I'm talking to her and I'm like, oh, well, now that I say that out loud, I right. do. Hear, and that's truly what makes a good therapist, right? Like giving you the autonomy in the situation to figure things out they're just kind of it's a lot like what we do on the track actually where they're kind of like a guide and a coach but it's really more so you in the driver's seat working through your emotions figuring out i've i've like remembered things that i was like oh my god i haven't thought about this in over 20 years but look at how it's affecting my life today look at how this is affecting my decision making look at you know and it's just sitting there and talking about things that you wouldn't talk about in any other space, but this space is a safe and sacred space. So, And I think it's so dope that you talk about it and because like you said, you said now that I'm in therapy, I'm like, I'm not crazy to feel this way, but I feel like, especially on social media, it's a highlight reel. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I'm, everyone's like, I'm doing great. I'm on this vacation. 
this is my man, I cut off his face, so you can't see it. <laughs> but, but it's like, people don't sit there and say like, today, today, was a rough day. today was a rough day. Today I made a pan of brownies and it was breakfast, lunch, and dinner today. And that's all I had. Um, you know, and I think especially as athletes, we're supposed to be like, I'm, I'm firing on all cylinders and I'm eating right and I'm sleeping right and like, I'm perfect. And so I, and then when I get into the competition, I'm perfect and, I, and nothing can phase me. And, and yes, this crazy thing happened to me, but I'm still going to get out here on this track and, and give you these performances. And I, and I feel like now we're seeing people in track and field, but in sports in general, like pull back layers and say like, Hey, like I'm a human being and like, I go through things. And sometimes I like, I won't be able to like give my best because I'm not at my best. And I think that is important. And I think the fact that you share your story is important so that someone can sit there and say like, I used to idolize this, this girl and I can still idolize her but she's real now she's like relatable mm -hmm. she's touchable mm -hmm. um and i think that's that's awesome and i and I, I also think that's also one of the reasons why we're so close um because me and whitney was a track friend like mm -hmm. whitney we saw each other each other is a track friend no i'm i'm saying she was a track friend and now she's a friend oh friend. okay um i just so, break that down because that was a I conversation like how it manifested i don't know if you reached out to me something happened recently and i hit another one of those spaces yeah. And I just tried to Corey on the phone. Yeah. And we so, weren't in that place yet, but I had hit a wall again and I just go, Corey, I'm not happy. And boom. Yeah. I would just cry on the phone to her and it felt so good. Like, okay. Okay. <laughs> so a track friend is track friend for me is you have people, I see you on the circuit, we key key, hey, what's up? We talk at the Dime League because there's nothing else to do. But when I get home, I'm not calling you. When I when I'm done running track and field, I, you won't be coming to my wedding, you know? And Whitney, what happened was, I think I, I think I posted something on IG and you said, I think I was like, does anyone need prayer or something like that? And you responded and something about your message right. said, call this girl. I, I just said, like, give me your number now. I'm, and then I called you and you were in a state and it was just like, from then on, I was like, I ride for Whitney. Like I've always cheered for you, but mm -hmm. I was like, I'm gonna be there for her because there was something, I don't know what it was, but it was like, we're here now. And for some reason, every time I call her now, it's like, she's like, I needed to talk to you right now. I don't know what you do. <laughs> but, yeah, I, like, but it, it, we, I don't think we would have been that close if you had not have been that vulnerable in that moment. And that something that made me say, I need to get off of just liking and commenting your, your pictures where you are obviously being so great and get into who you are as a person, like get it get dirty with you, you know? I'm actually glad you brought that up. So a lot of times people talk about social media. I know a lot of track athletes are big on social media and I post few far in between. And I used to always say, I used to always say I couldn't post a lot because I didn't want to post the life I wasn't living. So all this unhappiness through the years, it was really hard for me to get on there and just like put a picture of me smiling or being my uniform when I really, as an individual, wasn't happy. So like that highlight reel for me, like it wasn't a thing. And to this day, I'm still getting used to, should I post today or should I post this month? It, it's weird. Um, so I'm trying to getting out of that and just like being more vulnerable and honest, but I'm glad you brought that up. If you don't yeah. post, just to the photos, I want to see it for me personally. Um, I hate to like put a pin in this, but I feel like we've, we've really got to dig into this. Yeah. And I got uh, quiet. I just want to say my eyes are wide because you're not a monster. That was such a beautiful story. No, like seriously. Stop, guys. I hate you. I hate you so Corey much. Corey swears that like I, there's a new emoji on um, iOS that's like a heart in fire. And I sent it to her and I was like, this is you. Because she thinks that she's like cold on the inside. Because I want to be. <laughs> but that moment that y'all just described, I was just like, that was nothing but divine for you to be like, I need to call this girl and to follow that be obedient. I mean, that was... I told you I love the people that we do. Are <laughs> I hold this together, Corey. I hold this Getting, but I love Whitney um, so me much. Too. And, um, I, like, like I said, you already know. If you need anything, or sometimes you just like need someone to call. Like I'm here for you. I hate I hate y'all so much because you guys really got real weird today. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm I told you we did it together. It's, okay. it's fine. We're gonna bring Eric in because Eric. Eric also will get me to cry. Um, <laughs> oh, I hate you guys so much. I hate feeling feelings. 
but it's good, guys. Feel your feelings. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Gosh darn I'm it! Gonna, I'm holding it. Right, let's change the mood. Let's We're gonna bring in. Bring um, in. His 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 hand is waving. Right, let me let it? me give him a little talk up. Hi, Eric. 2012 retroactive gold medalist in the high jump. We're gonna hopefully talk to him a little bit about that. Two-time world indoor champ, bronze medalist, two-time Olympic Games finalist, two-time world championship finalist, the 2011 and 2012 NCAA outdoor champ. Between 2008 to 2018, I think you might have me beat, Eric. I thought I was the, the make the team beast, but he has made at least one team every year between 2008 to 18. Ten times U.S. champ. And oh, wow in a row indoor five in a row outdoor i mean come on come and can on. i can i sit can i just say one thing because i think this is so eric eric knows like that's my dog and the when he broke his streak right eric got third at usa's he tore his achilles when he when he got third so in order to be eric he had to tear his achilles and still when he tore his achilles still with he was still up on there even broken Broke it all the way down. He still was was the, at his worst. He was still the best. And I just have to talk about my friend like that. And when Moses um, said, "If you're gonna do it, you go. I'm gonna die in order for you to beat me." And we're gonna get into Eric Kennard, the we man, the myth, the legend. It. Eric, where are you? How are you? Thanks for joining us. I'm good. I was. I didn't know what the mood was gonna be like. I saw people crying over there. And, <laughs> uh, the was all out. <laughs> and, and, and then the character pops up. It's like, oh, you coming in now? I'm like, oh my goodness. Don't Hopefully, do it. Uh, and Eric knows I don't cry like that. that. Yeah, so, you know, you know, you tears out of me. Right, but I don't cry like that. <laughs> but no, uh, it was cool to hear about your uh, story, Whitney, for sure. I was kind of tuned in. I think for the latter part of it, but uh. It was interesting to hear about your, uh, um, you know, journey in the sport of athletics and, you know, where you are now and uh, the obstacles you've overcome that people don't even know are obstacles. It was great to hear. For sure. Thank you. Cool. All right. We're going to have a little fun. We, yes. we break up the interviews with um, podium predictions. Hustle Clean podium predictions. Hustle Clean is a mission driven self care brand for the active lifestyle. Products are sold nationwide in Walmart and Target. It's athlete and black owned. So go to hustleclean.com and enter the discount code TGS that stands for Track Girl Summer for 10% off. Get in the hustle and get clean. That's not their logo. I just made that up. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> First, I thought it was a real thing. Like, I was like, yo. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but you like getting the hustle and get clean, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good. All okay. right. E, we're going to talk to you, but we're going to get into uh, our podium predictions. Let me zoom in on our board here. We like to give our guests the opportunity to pick which one we're going to uh, pick first. So today we are predicting the men and women four by four. Whitney's going to be my partner, Team Corey. Eric's going to be on Team Natasha. Um, Who goes first? Four by so, men or women? You want to talk men's first or women's first? Women's I'm not going to lie, though. I thought we were predicting high jump, so I was ready for that. But that's okay. I, we're I don't know four why. I, I, we were going to, and then we were like, we never have time to, we're, we never have time to do three events. But just be ready for the four by four. Also, okay, question. If we're going to, are we doing men's first or women's first? Women. That, okay, women. 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 Okay, before we get into, like, which countries we think are going to get on the podium, one, do we think that the women, the U.S. women, can break the world record? I also want to point out, is, I'm a part of history, we are going after our sixth straight win. 2016 was five. We're going after number Olympic six. Olympic win. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, 2015. Okay. You are so... I'm, I will not... 2015 made me so mad. But anyways, um, right now the world record is held by the Soviet Union. It's 315.17. That's an average of 48.75. It's like 75-ish, 48.8-ish um, per leg. I think we have it. Um, but do you think we can do it, guys? Uh, I don't know about this time around. Okay, okay. Oh, 
Let us hear why. You said the world Keep record. Yeah. And what, who who do you okay, time out? I don't know. I don't know if you can switch all four legs from prelim to final, but I think yeah, I don't think I don't know if because if you can if you can pick only pick two legs to switch, we're not breaking the world record. Oh, okay. But if we could do our fit, like we can just pick the four we want. What was the order for? I'm sorry. Um, the I, order in the prelim. The order was, was and it was Caitlin Caitlin Whitney. She went fifty point seven. Wadalene went forty nine six. Kendall Ellis went fifty point oh six, and Lena Irby went fifty point thirty four. Lena is busy this That's week. Like the final or to like the prelim win? No, that was, that was a prelim win. Okay, but I'm, we could put in my head. I'm putting, we're putting a thing. We're putting Sydney. We're putting Delilah. Yeah, that's in your head. Yeah, that's in your head. But in an ideal world, world, but we know that that's yeah. not how USATF operates. Please right. sit. I'm if you were gonna say, if you were gonna say that was the relay, Corey, if you yeah. were that was the relay, I would say, okay, yeah, they could break the world record. But I I admit, they're not a hundred percent certain. But in the mixed relay, they did switch out all four legs, so I'm not mm -hmm. certain if they're able to do that in this relay as well. We didn't see it happen in the four right. by one, but that's fair enough Is because the they went off the shaky. Is the same coach making these decisions that made our men's decision in the four by one? So this is kind of show we having. This is what we're doing. This is the show we're having. This is the show we're having. On several posts, Michelle has made it clear that she is the women's Olympic relay co coach. But who is the men's coach? I don't. I don't I'm lower. Who is the men's coach? I'm the first day claiming them. Uh, the men's Olympic coach is claiming the the. The relay team, like future claims, baby mamas. Like he just like, <laughs> I ain't. <gonna> do <laughs> Eric, you'd be a great politician. Well, he, he is a politician. Like, he is a politician. These, <laughs> these comments and questions is more like this, and he's just holding that stoic face. Like, you see me over here. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? How y doing? Please go. You know, yeah. right. What are you on? <laughs> Eric is the leader in our community. What's on Eric? No, why you can't say what you want to say? Because Eric, Eric unrecorded would say some things. Exactly. And I know that if I say some things, people are going to hold me accountable for it. No, I'm not even going to hide it. I'm not even going to hide it. Yeah, I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, I know if I say it, you know, it's a thing. But I don't think that the world record would be broken by the women in 4x4. Okay. Um, okay. Based on. Uh, the pool of women I think that are going to be available to run. I mean, you have to consider a thing ran rounds in 800. Uh, Sydney has run rounds and broken the world record in 400 meter hurdles. So even if you had the superstar team that was able to be, you know, the super team with Allison and Sydney and the thing, um, I don't know who else, who else you said for it. They've, they've had a little more than a few days. A little, right? Yeah, like, yeah, that, that would be, uh, that's a lot of yeah, running. I'll only one coming in tired. Allison will be the only one coming in tired, which I have seen Allison come in tired and still not give, not give us a 48, but a 47. She's, she, she actually is on the fastest split of all time. I, you know, listen, you were talking about 2015. <laughs> that, was a, a, that was a late. There's a picture of me and Allison where I, like, I'm hugging her. I literally, in that moment, I didn't know what she ran, but I said, you are the effing goat because I knew it was something stupid. That relay... We always say nobody can carry the relay on their back. Listen, I was just holding on for dear life on my leg. <laughs> Allison carried that relay in 2015. That silver that we got was Allison's 47 split. Okay. Yes. I miss you guys. Um, and I miss you so, <laughs> so oh my, those are my favorite years. Honestly, in all honesty. What yeah. year was that? You said 2015. That was the worst. That was one of the worst years I've seen. From 14 to about 17 were my favorite years, like in terms of like the teams. Yeah. Uh, I was, 2013, I was a baby. I really remember that team. That was the Moscow team. That's where you medaled, yeah? Or you medaled in London. Me? Eric. I didn't make it in London. Oh, Eric. Yeah. Eric? Yeah. I think both you medaled like, in um, London. I think you were still in college. Me? In London? Yes. You were in college. Yeah. Yeah. I think in 13, I, I made like fifth or sixth or something like that. Yeah, but those were my those teams were so fun. All my results oh. will change though in the next five or ten years. They'll keep changing, you know what I mean? So oh, gosh. You know how that goes. run from there, please. 
I'm just saying. He, he turned in red, if you didn't know. He did consider running for mayor. I did. Uh, Are you serious? I promise I thought about that. It so. would be paid enough, though. So. So. You'd be That's great. I, uh, like, do, do, not let Eric, do not let Eric feel himself. Um, okay, if there's two legs, you're switching. Do you have video or Lane assignments up? Um, no, I do not. Um, if you're switching two legs, who gets those two legs? You put in. I'm Allison's getting one of those legs. We just know we know yeah, that. Yeah. Okay, so, so we, if you legally said we can switch two legs, right? Based on who we're yeah. in the qualifying round. Um, I think you can see Canera on there. Am I saying her name right? Quinera did not look good in the final. You don't think they'll put her on there? This is. But remember who we're talking about. Exactly. I mean, and yeah, so you know, know what they did to Quinera Hayes in 2015? And you think, oh. okay. I'm not going to say this because I'm still mad about that. Um, Who's the relay coach? Michelle. Freeman? Mm -hmm. uh, uh. You put Sydney on, you put Delilah on, or you put a thing. I, I think if you only pick take two, no, I think really ran really well. I was going to say, we've got baby, we've got baby Liam Bonnie. wants to come say hi. It's Liam's birthday. I oh, my think, gosh. I think we put, I personally I put, uh, probably put a thing on. But that would be. Yeah. See that, and that's I that, can would, see that. that would just be me. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't mind putting Sydney or Dalai Long, but out of those two, it's about who wants to do it, you know what I mean? Right, like a thing has been right. running four by four all year, you know, and he has been asking to be on four by four, exactly. She's so, like, in her interview, like, I'm right. gonna be up in there, but right. I, so, I think yeah. Allison's gonna be on this relay unless Allison's just like, I don't. Do not put me on this relay, Allison Felix is gonna be on that relay. Mm. Okay. I mean <laughs> uh, we're gonna find out. <laughs> All right. So who do who do we think's winning this four by four? I don't know. <clears throat> who do we who we got for gold? I don't, I don't see anyone coming for USA. I'm, I'm really well, thinking about it. I was like, let's, I'll keep thinking four by one. I was like, this is the this is the four by four. I think we're okay with the four by four. Let's go. I wanna I wanna also throw this out there because depending on what the rule is, whether or not we can switch two or all four, there were two Jamaican finalists and two American finalists. Yeah. Mm. Everybody but one person in that final ran forty nine. So I don't think this race is going to be as open and shut as we think it's going to be. Well, if you feel that way, make, make Jamaica your first pick. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm picking USA. I don't know about you. I'm picking USA That's cute as well. All, but I but think I'm USA just, is gold. Listen, what we do here, we have to present the facts. That's <laughs> fine. And I present the bias. <laughs> I would say Jamaica second. And I, I would take uh, for the women's, I would say USA, Jamaica, and dare to say. I would say Poland for third. Yeah. Poland? I would, I would, I would Poland? dare to say. Poland is the first Olympic champions in the mixed relay. And they have. So Poland, when it comes to 4 or 4 they do the thing. They know how to do. I think it's USA, Jamaica, I Poland. Poland. I can see Poland. Yeah. I saw Poland, so y'all got to pick someone, something else, Eric. Okay, Don't well, try to I'll just pick right. GB just because I know they're out there. Great Britain? Yeah. Oh, hold on. We're not locking that in. Just we now. might have to lock that in because we got four. Netherlands oh, also. The in front of me, though, Tosh, or the, the legs. I don't, I don't uh -huh. see what you see. What are you looking at? Now, you looking at on, online, are these the final people that are already listed? Yes, the finals are, are like the finals are like oh oh where do you oh, see where those do you are the see? final people? It says Allison Felix, Kaylin Whitney, Canary Hayes, Ellis. Oh, Ellis is the anchor. I like Ellis as the anchor. Oh, so it's Quinera. Oh, they how do I get back on it? They lock Maybe in their lakes. <laughs> that might be right. That might be right. Wait, where, where are you seeing that? Is it on when you 
ah, I know it's a little bit of a glare, but anyways, um, you can just put in four by four Olympic relay tomorrow's final, and then it puts all the names under each country and who declare the pool. So I think those are just a pool of reference, right? I can't see past like the first four people. That's all. Like I don't know if it's four or if it's how many are in there. Six people are in the pool, right? Yeah. It's usually six people, but we're hearing one, one two, two, three, four. four which yeah, eight. I don't know. After Alice, I can't see. Oh, Jonathan's. Jonathan's pool. So let me tell you what who's in the pool. But I actually pulled the men's instead of the women. So give me a second. Gosh darn it, Corey. Who at? Okay, women's four by four. The pool is Kendall, Allison, Quinera, Waddley, and Caitlin. So we, we're we not going to have a thing, the Lola or Sydney on it. Does that change things? Does that change things? Look at Jamaica's pool. I said no more records, so that did not change that much for me. Right about that. Eric, where are you right now? What is it right We just like to know. Just in oh, general. You and my you don't business. Have I don't like that. I don't like how you in my business. I don't care about like that. I'm always, first of all, you're always in my business. Let's get things very straight. I was going to say that. Because. I was going to say that. He's like, the other thing about Eric, he tries to be Mr. Cool, but like inside, like, once you crack that hard at Siri, he's a big soft. Wait, kid. how do I see Jamaica's pool? Why is, um, oh, you think, okay. What are you doing? Okay. So they've got. McGregor, Jenkins, Sean, McPherson. Williams. Mm-hmm. They shout out Stacey, that's what I was. Um, Stacey actually runs a really good thing. I don't see, I just. What were the splits today? The splits? For Jamaica or for the U.S.? For us. Um, Caitlin ran a 50. Caitlin. Caitlin, sorry. Caitlin Whitney, yeah. Right? Caitlin. She ran 50.7. Waddling ran 49.6. Ellis ran 50.06. And Irby ran 50.34. Irby has been working. I think you've got to leave Waddling in on there. Yeah. And I think you have to leave Kendall on there. Um, and depending on how Quinera feels, I you leave Irby. Tasha, you're the expert, so because I'm locking us in because we do have. I think I think we do have the stronger team based yeah. on what I'm seeing um, for the pool for Jamaica and USA. I do think we have the stronger team. Where I am torn is by tradition we put the best. 400 finishers in the final. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I saw this morning, I'm not sure that I leave um, Quinera on. Yeah. Um, only because this is a race that we can't hide anybody. Mm-mm. She didn't get out at all. Mm-mm. And she was in lane two. She was, so I, she mean, could I know see she was down lane two. But she could, see, she could see that the field was pulling away and then like, didn't make a move. And she ran 50.8, which is very close to 51. And we can't afford any 51 legs on. I'm not, I'm not being shady. I'm just being, yeah. I'm just. These are tired. Yeah. Um, I don't know that if she's tired, but, but relays bring something out of people. True. So mm-hmm. I don't know. But if I had to make the call, I would have a really tough conversation with Quinera. And be like, are you ready to roll or not? Yeah. And I would. Probably have to split to go with one of the other legs. Um, Am I locking this in? Yeah. Uh, oh. Whoa, 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 whoa! Great Britain, can you pull up their pool? <coughs> sure, I'll do whatever you want. We're on that on that GB. <laughs> We're in lane nine. I don't know what y'all talk about. Um, they're in lane nine. They got Jody. I don't see it for Great Britain. That's your that's y'all's pick. Well, we can't pick Poland because y'all already got Poland. Yeah, but I would pick um, I would pick Cuba before it. Cuba actually has had some really good legs. Do you want? Yeah. I wish that their PR. Oh, there. they got the eight hundred girl on there. Mm-hmm. Cuba might be in there. I like I like doing a little wild a little wild card. I like doing a real wild card. Am I, am I switching Great Britain? Great Britain is the wild card. 
sweet by the color of the day. I mean, I, you think Cuba? You think Cuba? I, I like Cuba's chances because they have the 800 girl on there. But she's run 156 this year. Um, they also had a girl in the final of the 400 today, although she was DQ'd, but we know it took 49 to get into the, the final. That top Cuban didn't finish the 400 meter final, though. Oh, she didn't finish. So you might I want thought to she was DQ'd. All right, we can we can stick with Great Britain. I mean, we know yeah. the structure of Great Britain, like team. Okay? So we know at least two people have been rested the whole time. So I, I think that. All right. Yeah, Let's get into these men. Let's get into these men. Mm. Okay. Oh, we, have, we only have you two legs to switch out. We only have two legs to switch it out. Are we we're putting I feel like we're putting Rye on the team. Oh we oh yeah. Are, is is Rye in the pool? We spent all that time uh debating. <laughs> I know. It's like we can just pull up the pool. We can just pull up the, the pool. Right, the pool yeah. Um, so for while we get that up, um, for those of you that do not know, because um, we, we like to bring facts and bring rules to Track Girl Summer, when you, some, sometimes it changes where it's like two hours before the um, preliminary, you have to declare your pool. Um, sometimes it could be a little bit later, um, but once the pool is submitted, that's it. There's no changing you have to pick from those six people, which okay. we thought it would be eight, but now we know that it's uh, six. six. So Rye's not in the pool, which I think, whatever. Um, we have Mike Cherry, Michael Norman, Vernon, Randolph Ross, and Trevor Stewart. Trevor split 44-7. Randolph Ross split 44-5. Um, Bryce Deadman, he ran, he ran the semi, and he's not in the pool. Um, he ran 44.08 and Vernon ran 44 at 34. You got to keep Vernon on. He's a vet. I think you put Mike in both the mics, Mike Cherry and Mike Norman on. And then between Stewart and Ross, it's 44.7 versus 44.5. Like it is. Um, let's see who Jamaica's pool is. I, I, yeah, that's one of the really good to me. I was going to say, it was my favorite. favorite. What their personnel right. is to okay, okay. Jamaica has um Nathan Allen, Sean Bailey, um Bartley, Dimish Gay, and Christopher Taylor. Christopher Taylor's running well too. I do think Poland's gonna get in there. Like Poland always look, I I'm never counting on Poland. You're in Poland. Like you going with Poland for <laughs> I think they have like the in. Doesn't Poland have like the indoor world record in the four by four? The men. Yeah. Uh, since when? Yeah. Is that did they break in two thousand eighteen? Record four by four hundred. Is it indoor? Yeah, it was in eighteen. Three hundred one. Um. Let me see. I don't know about. I don't it know was about Poland. That. It broke the world indoor record. It was Poland. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to tell y'all. Don't sleep on Poland. Don't sleep on Poland. Poland. So we're we're talking men. I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick the U.S. to go first. You know who's not in this relay pool, which I, like it doesn't make any sense. But I I kind of want him in the. I want Fred Curley in the four by four relay pool. I'm sorry. They're not gonna make those type of decisions. I don't think. I know they're not, but like me, what I want. Yeah, I mean. What we got for gold? What? Botswana. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. You said Botswana? Say it, say it with your chest. Botswana? All right, I'm going to go with. Oh. I don't think we're going to win it. I think we're good for definitely silver and, or bronze. Let's put our silver because I, because I, whoo. Sorry. Can I, I just, just say it? I feel it. I love them though, you know. I can't go against the grain like that. I, I can't do it. That's not going against the grain per se, but I understand we've been objective. I, I would but say. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like anyone taking out the US, it's Poland. Not, it you, could look good. The only thing I don't agree with is Poland for first and then Botswana for bronze? No. 
I'll go with. I yeah. That's kind of what I want to do. All right, Bill. We're gonna go Poland, Poland Botswana. and Botswana. You will definitely not run away with it. Dang, Charmaine. And, Let us know. And this, this isn't, we're not supposed to, but like, honorable mention, <laughs> you know, I like an honorable mention with Jamaica. So, if Jamaica is up on the podium somewhere. I told y'all so. No, 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 no. We can't That's do that. Eric, it's our show. I get to do what I want. Uh. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, I say, I say, um, Botswana, Poland. You say Botswana, Poland? You don't think your Jamaicans gonna get up in there? I don't think Poland is gonna get in there. Um, Jamaica won't medal. I, I was I was I was gonna say uh, Jamaica, and uh, not Jamaica for a second, but I was I was gonna say Botswana, Jamaica. I don't think Poland is gonna. I think Jamaica didn't win a, a relay medal in the four by one. I think it's wide open in the four by four when you're looking at like who I'm going to argument against Poland. My argument against them? Yeah. I don't have really a strong they argument. Just, I, really did win. I know. I know. Like, I know. I know. I'm, I'm just, I'm not okay. against Poland. Like, I, just, I don't have an argument against them at all. I, was, I mean, I'm saying who's going to win the bronze medal, personally, in my opinion. Like, I think Botswana is going to be a clear second, but. I think Jamaica will like compete. I think it's gonna be more of a competition for third than it is gonna be mm. uh, three teams run away with the race. That's your partner. But Tosh, you want to go Poland? We can go Poland for sure. Like, oh okay, I'm gonna I'm I'm give Poland an honorable mention. And if we right. do, I'm gonna get on Twitter and throw your behind under the bus. <laughs> As we do here in track Center. Right, man, that's cool. That's cool. All right. Okay, we actually are on time today. Are we? Look oh, at yeah. us. High five. Our guest came in on time. We It took the second to third to last show. We finally are like on time. You're welcome. Somebody to- said Christopher Taylor is a beast on the anchor leg, so Jamaica could squeeze a bronze. So somebody doesn't think I'm crazy. Oh, that would be a squeeze. You are shady. And it's fine, and we love to see it. Welcome, you know, it's fine. Okay, so Whitney, thank you much. Thank you, so much. thank you so much for coming to Track All Summer. We love seeing your beautiful face. We, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for like being open and vulnerable because I think the things we talked about today are what actually really matters, not these predictions. Like what we were talking about as far as mental health and asking for help and like body image super great conversation um thank you so much for coming we're gonna let you go we're gonna get into this we're gonna have you back we are gonna thank have you, you back and, and you're <laughs> working for the conversation now um Enjoyed and it. we're gonna get in and we're gonna get into eric Knard. we're gonna get into his business that he don't want to tell us i'll be in the comments yes uh, we appreciate it absolutely <laughs> so you've given everyone your accolades and we right. talked mm-hmm. about how you have been the most dominant high jumper in our era hands down in the u.s period point blank well, like eric has always been sure money when it comes to high jump in the u.s so i'm gonna we're gonna start off with the dark stuff so oh, I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> she came back up on the screen like, oh. okay bye again i don't know how, i don't know um, cause I've never really heard you talk about this and I don't really like to talk about it. And I know that it's like mixed emotions, but something you knew that was coming in 2012, you won the silver medal, but retroactively you were upgraded to, no, you won the gold and your gold was stolen from you. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that, you know, like in 2013, we won the gold, it was stolen from us. And then we, you know, had this whole medal ceremony and it's like, this consolation, like, I'm supposed to feel good about this, but it's like the moment has passed, you know, the The money has The money has has passed. passed. Uh, Can you talk to us a little bit about, like, what what that is, also how long it took for that to even be acknowledged? And um, I don't even know that it has been acknowledged. I I think I just found out that um, on the IWA, oh, not IWA anymore, World Athletics website. It's yeah, because I was like, why didn't Eric call me to tell me he got upgraded? Because I've 
you've been in my phone with a gold medal emoji next to your name because I knew it was coming. Right. Like, this happened. Yeah, I don't have a gold medal. I, I heard they got them to spare, though. They gave away two for first in Tokyo, but I, I don't have one. So. And, uh, yeah. So, all those well, are... Wait. So, you haven't received your uh, actual gold medal yet? Oh, y'all cutting up. What you say? You haven't received your actual gold medal? No, no. Like I've received no medal or no, like, anything. Uh, I received a letter from the USA. A letter? From the USOPC, I think. <laughs> like two years ago stating a cast arbitration stuff and but officially no I, I received anything i haven't received anything a gold medal or certificate any notification or anything like that um so i don't even think about it to be honest like i don't uh there was no like it was all a farce like i knew back then you know personally but if i said something about it back then everybody would say i was just being a sore loser you know so I mean, it's it's just kind of one of those things that you uh, you have to be. It's not humility you carry when you carry something like that. It's just meekness, right? And it's not weakness. It's just I'm strong and quietly strong in the sense that I know, like, okay, I have been this person this whole time. And although I was not playing small, and the world tries to play you small, like it's just you know, you know, like, hey, I have this advantage, and I, I know I'm good in this way, or I'm great in this way, and you know, they can attempt to oppress, but um, it's, it goes beyond recognition as far as, or the limitations of a medal ceremony, basically. And I think that that's something that we all, like even listening to Whitney's story about um, her perspective and, you know, and the difficulties of compartmentalizing, you know, successes and failures in athletics and real life. I think that um, sometimes we as athletes put our uniform on and, and, you know, we have our superpowers with us, but we need to learn how to take the cape off and just kind of operate with humility and understand that, hey, whatever, there are worse and greater things in the world. Like, you know what I mean? Like, truly, like, it's just like, whatever. Like, there there are no reparations in the world for any of us, let alone in athletics as far as gratification is concerned about an accomplishment that happened nine or ten years ago. I love E, but hate him all at the same time. You and hate that it's me saying it. That's really what it is. It's really what it is. <laughs> like, I always joke with E. Like E is one of my boys. I posted a picture yesterday. Um, uh, our opening ceremony memory popped up on my Facebook, and I was like, going back to what Corey said earlier about like having real friends. Like E is one of those people that like we've traveled the world together outside of competing together. Although I met you later on in my career. And so there's still like this, man, you just a little young, but, but you speak like well beyond your Eric years. Eric has been 46 years old from the Poetically. Day <laughs> that is one of the things that I love, but hate about you all at the same time. Like, Oh, just shut up. But <laughs> so. you, you, I call it fake D, but you said something that uh, you said it a few years ago and it stopped me in my tracks because it, it made me think about the high jump in a different way. And I think in listening to how you just talked about that experience that I, I you have a way of kind of putting things into perspective. But like you said, the high jump is one of the events that you compete to failure. Yeah. And when you said that, I was like, oh, my God, you Not do. Incredible. Like you keep then the pole vault, like you keep jumping until you fail. And so it's like some some of your success is also measured by like when you actually fail. And so I will, if you could just break that down a little bit further for us, because when you said that, it, I literally was just like, oh, again, here he goes with some fake deep ish. But, but it's, it it's really annoying because it's like it's like facts. But why do you have to say it like that with like with his demeanor? But like yeah. we can't even we can't even be upset about it because it's like you're, you're, you're right. Can't just the truth. Uh, uh, I mean, for me personally, athletics is all like track and field, high jumping has always been like the space in between what was going on in real life and what I aspire to accomplish in life. Right. So, you know, like you really you operate like in that space, even on that board, right? To be a high jumper, you don't operate in, you know, the gold medal space or the silver medal space or the bronze medal space. You operate in the spaces in between. That blank space of like, you know, the beyond the comparison space. The, you know, I missed here, but 
even though I missed, I can't even compare, you know, I can't even think about or fathom this failure now because I'm right back up again. So it has to be this blank space again, right? You know, where I can kind of create or make any, you know, action, whether it be a great success or a great failure from here. Uh, because if not, you'll be stuck at whatever the height of the limitation of your mind is, really. Like, you know, because once you miss, you you after you fail, you won't be able to succeed. Uh, you'll, you'll only um, look at the, you know, the experience as fire being hot, basically. Oh, I missed. Now I can't do that. I know I can't put my body over there because I just failed at getting my body all the way over the bar. So I think that um, you have to have this emotional discipline and, and kind of have this imagination that is, it, it doesn't limit you to the comparison of yourself or the comparison of other people, uh, people's accomplishments to yours. You know, you have to be able to, you know, continuously increase the professional standard, like whatever the standard is, like I have to raise the bar. You hate to say raise the bar because it's so kind of like, uh, you know, so cheesy, right? But it's just the reality. You have to be able to like raise the bar continuously and uh, not live with those limitations uh, of your own failures or the failures of other people. Aye, aye, aye. So speaking of raising the bar, um, and talking about the high jump, which we've had a conversation offline, but uh, the high jump, the men's high jump in the games, um, we saw the Olympic gold medal shared and then a bronze medal. And there was like some confusion about whether or not like, it's an illegal. can you have two people share the gold medal? And then we went and did some research and it turns out that like, it has to be determined before the event is um, contested or the athletes agree to do a jump off or decide to share. And we've since learned that um, the jumpers, uh, Mutaz and what's the Italian's name? John Marco. John Marco. Which they train together, correct? No, no, no. They're just friends. They're just They're friends. friends. Yeah, I mean, they yeah. make the decision to share the medal. So I'm curious, what would he do? I know what he would do. I wouldn't have decided to share I I knew that. Uh, but, uh, anybody that knows me knows I'm not. Uh, it's not my natural uh, first response. However, I do understand their perspective, and I stated that like uh, it wouldn't have been in me. I don't think to say, okay, let's share it. Um, I think that takes great humility to do, um, especially understanding, you know, what both of them can. I mean, John Marco's out there with his cast, like you know what I mean. Like that's very that's significant. You know, Mutaz also faced the. Uh, a career ending, you know, of sorts, injury and ankle injury. Uh, so I, I understand. And they were both perfect on the day. Like, if you go through a competition and you don't miss, you literally gave it everything you had to give it. You know what I mean? And to say, hey, let's jump off, you know, it's just like, oh, okay. I mean, but the only outcome, like we talked about that failure, is that I lose because I've already gave it my best. So I can only get worse, right? Like that's the that's the comparison in your mind. That's the little angel or the little devil that's on your shoulder in that moment. It's like if I endeavor to do this again, you know, I can fail. I've already succeeded thus far. I'm already a gold medalist right now. You know what I mean? So, you know, if I gamble these chips, I can fail. Now I can share it or I can cope with the failure. Me personally, I would I'm a competitor. So I would be like, you know. Is it a failure though? If like you know that the worst you're going home with is a silver? No. Yes. I it again. yes. Yes, because you don't train and you don't get that close and you don't you know, you don't remain perfect in a competition to say, uh, I'm gonna get I'll just settle for second, basically. You know, or I'll I'll operate with the knowledge of second being, you know, an option for me. Right now, in that moment, you know you're a gold medalist. And if this person is going to share it with me, then boom, we have two. I didn't even know they had more. I didn't Because I still don't have a medal from a long time ago, I didn't even know they made them to have them sitting around like that, personally. Like, I had no idea. Um, Can I highlight the type of competitor Eric is? Uh, because if you watch Eric, Eric compete, when he competes, you can see him like talking to himself. Like One of the reasons why me and Eric are such good friends is I say I'm a psychopath. This man is crazy, crazy. Um, if you follow Eric on Instagram, you'll see him like all last year and the year and even the year before, because it's been two, basically two years of training for the Olympics. You would see him post him training 
and it's like one, two in the morning. And I'm like, and I'd be like, E, what are you, what are you doing? And, he, and Eric is like, oh, that's a time I compete in Tokyo. I need to get my body ready to get, and I'm like, months out, this is what we're doing. Um, I came, came to, I came to Atlanta to do a meet and Eric at night, he put, he would put, Eric, you had an Achilles injuries. He puts pebbles on his stairs at night so that if he wakes up in the morning to pee, he's still working on his ankle dexterity, walking down to the bathroom. This is the type of person we're talking about. So I want people to understand one of the reasons why I love and respect you so much is like, you're insane. And like the, the attention to detail to your craft. Like when I hang out with Eric or talk to him on the phone, he's constantly doing something to like work on this. He's, he's always like feeling his body and, and, and working on making sure he's, even when he's sitting down, he's working on Tokyo. Um, and so I Your understand mind too, yeah. because yes, he, re- he, he reads a lot. Well, hey, check him, check your mail. I sent you a book. Hey, you need to read this book. You need to get your mind right. Eric hey. and I start a book club every year, and <laughs> Eric never reads the book, so we, it's over in January. But we start a book club. But I know I'm the book that she uh, assigns to the book club. Yeah, because you never come up with one. Don't play me. Yeah, that's true. Um, but what I will say is that's the type of person we're dealing with. So when when you ask him, are you going to share a goal? No. We already need the answer. But, we, but I, need people, people I need people to know <laughs> who Eric Kennard is. Yeah. And it's not personal, right? Like, and it's so funny because not, a lot of people sent me DMs previous. Oh, y'all got the ice cream. <laughs> you know what's crazy? This is the year before. Uh, this, is, this is not correct, I don't think. That's not correct. I think this is the year of the trials in 2008. In that picture. I think that's, a, oh wait, that's the year of the trials before I made my first Olympic team. That's crazy. I went to the trials there. But um, yeah, everybody was sending me messages like, I just have to know, you know. And I'm like, you already know the answer to this question. You, you know, that's the reason you're asking me because you know you wouldn't share it and you want to find another person that wouldn't share it also. You know what I mean? So what is that? Um, so we want to bring it back to you, but we did get a question in the chat from Anika. Um, does Eric think Javon Harrison should pick one of the jumps or continue to double long jump, high jump? Uh, he he should pick one. Um, he I don't believe he'll be able to sustain uh, himself in doing both. I didn't think that it was a wise decision trying to do both. Uh, I didn't tell him that because, you know, you don't tell people that, right? That's something that, you know, you don't, uh, you know, they have to come, you know, I don't solicit like information and, or criticism of people and their the decisions in that way that I don't know. Like. But I think that, um, yeah, it he'll have to choose or he'll be forced in positions like he was in, you know, where, you know, you really have to put your fitness and your body on the line. I mean, I don't think, I watched the qualifying of the high jump. I didn't watch the qualifying of the long jump. That was the first time I saw him jump with knee tape on his knee all year, you know, like, and I've kind of watched him a little bit all year. So I think it'll catch up on him. It's going to be hard. High jumping is hard on anybody, as she know. Um, and it'll be difficult to sustain a long career in both. And we're good. At, you know, we have good long jumpers in depth uh, in the long jump and, you know, seemingly in the high jump now. So, yeah. Do you say he choose the long jump or the high jump? Um, I don't know. I always thought that he was a. I thought he was a better long jumper. Than he was a high jumper. Um, I think he is. You know, right. I think he is a better long jumper right now than he is a high jumper. Uh, And I mean, I think that kind of showed a little bit. And you know how he progressed this year, and you know how things went at the games. Um, the keyword is a lot of upside, also in high jump. I think he has upside in, in the high jump, also. One is high jump is still this is going to be more taxing on his body, though. So I don't know. Sure. All right, and lastly, shout out to our girl Vashti, who was jumping with one blue lash. <laughs> um, how do you think she's going to fare in the finals? This this because uh... y'all are close. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, I have Vashti winning, but that's me, you know. But I have her winning. I think that um, she's operating with, you know, 
she's been here before and she has you know hasn't competed to her standards at the games um yet you know and even at a world championship yet i mean i think that she um has been competing at a high level but not the highest level for her and i think that um She's looked good this year. I think that she looked good in the qualifying up until 195, and then she was able to kind of figure out the surface. So she's everybody's going to go on the finals with more information. I mean, the men's high jump qualifying looked the same as, uh, you know, the women's in the sense of everybody trying to figure out the surface and the apron, et cetera. But when it came down to the men's, it was, one, you know, one for the history books. So I think uh, in the women's, it'll be one for the books as well. Something else we didn't talk about is so, uh, Eric's also. It's funny because me and Eric have <laughs> the same agent. We go for the same team. We also have the same sponsor, and which is, yeah. I think, you're the only male track athlete that's ever been a Jordan athlete. Yeah. Um, what is I know what it's like, but I feel like people would like to know what it's like being a Jordan athlete. Oh, it's good. I mean, it's. It's a it's a definitely a uh, exclusive club I would say as far as the company is concerned and it's good to be part or associated with a legacy as great as uh, MJ's I mean that's you know that's big uh, yeah especially being one of one it's cool for me you know as far as the club is concerned okay. Eric, exactly, right? <laughs> Eric used to make me so mad because up until a few years ago they really weren't making women's clothes from Jordan. And so I put on something and I would see Eric on the Instagram. Eric, they they build their clothes for like long, lanky guys like Eric. So I, I would look like I'm wearing, you know, <laughs> the baggiest clothes and look like a little dork. Eric over here looked like a GQ model. I'm like, nothing ever fits me like it fits <laughs> Eric. Well, you know, Eric thinks he brings the swag. Eric does have. He like, thinks he makes the clothes look good. Not the clothes make him look good. I hate to say this, but Eric does have. Some of why I'm on look, track. Look at how I'm sitting back right now. I can't. It's like, stand I, I know. You. It's, it's annoying because it's like you have to give Eric his props. Yeah. But it's annoying because it's like Eric knows that he has swag. And that's. Look at him like, sit, yeah. sitting back like somebody's uncle. Anyway. But, so. <laughs> but you know what? It's like, as much as we as much as much we talk crap about Eric, Eric has, Eric has been someone who has been very supportive to me and like has been there in my lowest when I couldn't figure out why I was. Same. I, yeah. And he is a he is a good person, and like a good friend, and I appreciate you, Eric, in my life. Yeah. It wasn't uh, that really cool to say all of that, was it, for you guys? No, I Eric. I tell you all the time, so like, just stop. I wanna, I wanna talk. Bring the conversation back to you. Mm -hmm. Um, are you competing somewhere this summer? Should we? We're we're looking for you next year you know, at, at home, home, right? Um, you know, and, and, and what's in the future? Like everybody gets to hear philosophical E and see how the mind works for E. Um, but then now we also know that, you know, you may run for mayor, <laughs> uh, but you sit on some boards at USA Track and Field and like, so, so what's in the Are future? You going to school? Do we see a coach? Do we see a businessman? Like, tell us what's, what's, what's to come for Mr. Eric Kanaki. I don't know. Uh, well, I do know. I have an idea. I, I know what I won't be doing. I won't be a mayor for sure. <laughs> um, and I can't see the future. And for the first time, I, I think that I'm not focused on like a date or a, or a process so much as I am an outcome, right? I mean, us as athletes, we always focused on like the Olympics is on this day. You know, Tokyo is this, this is the destination. It's destination based fantasy or, or work or motivation and you know now i'm kind of just outcome based i'm focusing on growing in areas that i was deficient in um that i didn't you know know the deficiencies exist and uh and and you know and i'm just kind of going and growing from there from there and that in those perspectives um as far as competing obviously i don't want to end my career fourth at the olympic trials like that's i'm not that's that's, that's the, that yeah, yeah. You know, I hate to say my resume is not conducive of that mark, but it's just, it's like not, like it's kind of a uh, demerit on the resume from my perspective. So, um, you know, I think that my first competition will be uh, USA Indoors, probably, um, seeing that there is an Indoor World Championship next year. 
And um, I definitely want to use the opportunity um, to compete in America for, you know, the world championship. Last time we had a major championship in the U.S., I took bronze in 16 in Portland indoors. So I, I definitely uh, want to go out there and represent, get on the team and, um, you know, get on the podium. Um, as far as school, I'm considering school. I'm considering school, and that's that's a lot for me to consider school because I'm not one who is a yeah. I, I'm not a, no knock to school, but I I don't like going to school. I'm not very. Uh, I, I don't but like. So what do you consider going in if you're considering it? Uh, MBA. Okay. MBA. Yes, I have an undergraduate degree in uh, business, so I wanted to get into psychology, but I think that I'm a little far gone. Um, for the pace of psychology right now, I think, you know what I mean? As far as like, I study undergrad business. I don't want to have to take all the electives and catch up. You know what I mean? Like sometimes- oh, you mean that kind of far gone. I thought you were yeah. saying like, uh, psychology is, I'm out of psychology's league. Like I already oh, know. No, 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 come on. Huh? <laughs> that, that's not beyond you to say now. <laughs> nah, I mean, no, it's probably not. If, if, if you do switch for sure, but yeah, no, I just, uh, I don't have any interest in having to like, you know how it is. Sometimes we get to skip steps and you get to go to a resource at this stage and, you know, you develop from this stage and I don't want to have to, you know, go back and do the. You know. I love Kentucky. It's just it's a little Burger King town. I didn't see Who do you think you are? No, but I'm curious though, because you're young enough. Yeah. Go for three more years or. I don't know if I'll go for three more years. Um, I, I I think that me personally in my career, I've never been one. I mean, even in this photo, right? Like, Corey, it's kind of a joke, but like you saying, like, you got on a Burger King crown. Who do you think you are? That's the year I won the Olympic gold medal. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew in NCAAs there at 21 what, you know, the world just figured out two years ago. But I think for me, I, I would want to compete, um, but I also don't solicit support in that way. Like, I think as athletes, for us in our sport, it's difficult to, you know, maintain longevity for a variety of reasons. Um, so we'll see. I'm, I'm focused on next year first and World Outdoors and the, the double championships, the World Indoor Championships. But and we touched on I know it. a little French, so we'll see. Um, we touched on it. Um, but I feel like we didn't really get into, like, you also had to work your way back onto, like, learning how to walk, run, jump because of your Achilles injury. I don't know if you want to talk about that journey, but I think it's, like, as someone who saw it, like, I feel like a lot of people would be inspired about, like, just having to gut it out. And, like, I know you said my resume isn't fourth at the Olympic trials, but the journey to get there was major and you had to push yourself and your, not only your body, but your mind. Um, and I would love just to hear your perspective on that because I think that's also one of the reasons why it might be hard to just like take three more years of this. Yeah. I think for me, that right there is, I, I jokingly tweeted Marquise Dendy, he faced the same injury in 16 where he didn't go to uh, Rio as saying like it was like a death sentence that's low-key like the kiss of death if you're an athlete right like it's a rupture in achilles or have anything going on with an achilles uh so it was definitely the most difficult thing i've ever endeavored to do was to return back to sport and a lot and i don't think that i even made my return back to sport um as far as like a mental capacity and a physical capacity and even spiritually until the, I got fourth at the trials. Like, I think I was endeavoring, like, to be prepared, like, to, you know, like, I think I'm ready. I think I can do this. I think I can do this. And then I think after being at the trials and, and taking fourth, I was like, oh, I know that I can still do this. You know what I mean? Even though I got fourth, like, I was yeah. like, I know. Like, I was operating with the belief that, you know, I wanted to be able to achieve and do these things. And because you are, like, you have this these confidences or, you know, these fears or this this tension. I, I don't operate from a fearful space. I just kind of try to manifest the process for myself. But I wasn't sure about it until after I got four at the trial. I think you, I said like, oh, I you said, like, my body failed me. And as athletes, like, the one thing we can count on is our body. Yeah. Um, and someone asked, why did you determine in your mind to initially try and come back from that injury? 
Uh, because I'm crazy. I was about to ask, was it even a choice? Because it wasn't not, a choice. yeah, because I, I can't. I don't. It's apples to oranges, but it is considered an injury to some. When I got pregnant with Liam, like it was not a choice. Yeah. Like I'm right. your wife. I'm still. You know, Just like Aries, Aries came out earlier, and he was like, "The doctor was like, 'You're, you're gonna failing. die. You're gonna and he die.'" He was like, "Okay, and I'm going to." keep running you figure out how to keep me alive yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no and it's not even a matter of you like so the ability to believe in half faith is the strongest power in the world so i mean it's it's not really about like you figuring out how to keep me alive if you aries it's like no nah, i'm gonna if i'm gonna die i'm gonna live first and while i'm living you know i'm gonna be running like so for me initially in that moment i think i was back there i even confessed it from my mouth like i remember i was emotional and i was like what am i gonna do and I was like, hey, man, you can do whatever you want. Like, you can still do this. Like, you know, like, you just have to, it's just going to suck. It's going to be hard. You know, it's going to be a long, arduous process, but it'll be no different from a 17 year old, you know, accepting donations or, or washing cars or, you know, to go to the Olympic trials at the age of 17 in 2008 than endeavoring to be, you know, on a podium four years later. Like, it's not any more probable than anything you've already done or accomplished you know what i mean so what's your favorite quote again my favorite quote mm -hmm. man i don't know what did i tell you it was because it changes last, the way last time I we talked have... it was what 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 would you do if you knew you wouldn't fail oh yeah that no that is definitely like it, it's that but i don't consider that to be so much of a quote as i do like the, like the kind of lifestyle like it kind of is a reality check for me so. <laughs> but so as we wrap up here i want to because you just said something that like truly taps into um, who you are as a person but as a vet on the field of like tapping into your past experiences mm -hmm. so like yeah. when you talk about like coming back from an injury coming back from childbirth coming back from an injury one of the things that i always say is that physically I am coming back from what may seem impossible to those who can't imagine it, right? But what yeah. I do have on my side out of everybody on the track is those repetitions, those experiences that I'm able to tap into. Now, I didn't get fourth at trials. <laughs> I didn't make it out of the semis, but I remember coming off that turn in the semis and like almost going for it and like in my head was like talking mess. And it's like that same thing where it was like, this is not how my career ends. Like, I know I have more in, like, there's that, that whatever that past experience that you're able to tap into. And Allison keeps coming up in the chat. I imagine she had past experiences coming back from a C-section to tap into, to be the legend that she is. And I if, if you I could just, was, I saw it. If you could just expound on that of like, that's what makes true champ. That's what makes true champions and like being able to come back and why, a comeback isn't a choice because it's like I have I, I have these things to, to tap back into that gives me that edge. Yeah, well, like for me, it's about not being a victim of circumstance, mm -hmm. um, whatever the circumstance is. And, and so you have to like make favorable conditions for yourself. Like I remember when I ruptured my Achilles and it was like, you know, um, I have such and such amount of days or time into the games or to prepare. And for me, it was like, oh, the one thing that I have is like the time to do this. Like, cause I don't have anything, I can't walk, you know what I mean? So it's, it's nothing else that I have to focus on or, you know, that I have to uh, key hone in on, you know, in, in this amount of time other than, you know, what I say I'm most passionate about. Um, but as athletes, I think, and as people, sometimes we focus a little too much on the changes that we go through and not the things that we grow through as far as the circumstances are concerned. Like, so I read a long time ago a guy by the name of Sir Edmund Hillary, and he's an Englishman. And um, Sir Edmund H Hillary, excuse me, was the first man to climb successfully Everest, right? But before he was succeeded, um, if I'm correct, he failed. And he gave... A lecture about his failure and in the lecture he he stated that you know everest had grown all it's going to grow and i'm growing still and that's why i'll succeed like basically that. like and after that you know i think a year later he successfully climbed and you know 
scale Everest or, you know, and then it was like, boom, like he knew that, yeah, I failed, but Everest is Everest and I'm me, you know, and I, I'm going to get better, you know, and the, that, that mountain will stand, you know, and that peak will still be the peak and, and I'll go through, you know, periods of growth and not just changes, which can be a positive or negative occurrence, you know what I mean? The glass of milk can be full or it can be spilled, you know, so it's all about, you know, how you uh, use the experience and the tools and the circumstances surrounding the experience. Uh, it's your experiences to grow. So that was too much. It was good. Not yeah. well, we're that all, was the perfect like, note ending, to end, end on. I was tech, tech, tapping Tasha to be like, we, we're trying to keep this under two hours. We never do. <laughs> oh, no, uh, really so But e, that was perfect. As you know, we love you. Um, we do. Thank you for imparting your knowledge, sharing this time with us, doing the shenanigans with us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we will be in touch. And Later. we will definitely be back, back on Try Girl Summer. Yes, Thank yes. you for having me on Try Girl Summer. I appreciate it. Ladies, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye, Eric. Later. And. Thank you guys for joining us today. Be sure to follow us everywhere, Twitter, IG, Facebook, follow Chakra Summer, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. Um, you can follow um, Whitney on IG, Twitter, and I think, and, and TikTok. Yeah, follow her TikTok. Um, her handle is uh, Lil, L-I-L, Miss, M-I-S-S, Black Diva. And she dropped it in the chat for y'all. I appreciate that. <laughs> Um, Whitney, drop in the chat if I if I miss any other place that they can find you. And Eric, you can follow him on at I think it says Eric, you guys. Eric um underscore canard. Um you can find him on Instagram and Twitter. Um definitely two really good follows. Um today we went live with World Athletics. We were watching we watched oh, basically the whole we meet. We were supposed to only watch the four by one, but we somehow watched basically the whole meet. Um and <laughs> Um, so we watched the four by one and then today you can, you can do, or tomorrow we'll be going on at 8.15 allegedly Eastern time. Um, cause I feel like we were just going to 8.15. No, 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 it's, no, it's fine. So it's 9.15 Eastern. Yes, 9.15. 9.15 Eastern tomorrow. We might be on a little earlier like we did today, but we'll definitely be watching, um, the men and women's four by one, four by four and you can get our live reactions. Um, and see how close we came. <laughs> um happy birthday to liam they said can you can you go get they want to see him before we get off okay i'll go, I'll get, him. I'll go get him i'll go get this him. outro <laughs> sorry um but yeah we'll see predictions we're getting liam liam turned two um if you want to see his cute birthday photos um natasha didn't tag me as a photographer but i took them i find it disrespectful that she wouldn't give me photo credits but we took some really cute pictures of Liam for his birthday. I think we're gonna go to the water park. Um, someone says watching you two has enhanced my admiration of track and track athletes and their commitment. Today, I feel like I got a little like a couple inches with these shoes, so I feel like I'm six three. Um, Here's the <laughs> birthday boy. He's hungry. <laughs> Say hi, hi. Too. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> Two. Two. Yay. Everyone's giving you love, Liam. <laughs> so make sure you guys come back, same place, same time. And remember, no matter what time of the year it is, <laughs> it's always a tropical <laughs> summer, baby. <laughs> That's our show. <laughs> and this is Liam, the birthday boy. Hi, guys. <laughs> I'm so mad at Whitney for getting <laughs>